Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeCharis, CPA extraordinaire, coming to you live from downtown Flushing, New York, still, for another amazing bedrock interview with Tracy Beavers Coaching. So my first question is coaching your, your last name? <laughs> no, sir. Oh, okay. Because I put you down as Tracy Beaver. So. Yes, sir. That's my name. And then I think my assistant, you had a different name. It was like Tracy something Beavers. Uh, probably Tracy Lane Beavers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't saying things. No, you're great. So, okay. Thank you. you we barely know each other. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Okay, good. I'm glad. Uh, so all I know about you is what I, I got in my calendar, to be honest with you. I try to be transparent. And uh, when I saw that you're like a networking uh, cash flow specialist, <laughs> because it, to me, it's all about networking. Yes. In today's world, I'm going to take, I'm going to talk for you. Okay. But I believe in today's world, you can't do marketing without networking. Correct. Without, okay. So, why don't you take it away? Who are you and why are you here? Yeah. So, I'm Tracy Beavers and I'm founder of Tracy Beavers Coaching. I'm a business and sales coach. And primarily, my focus is on sales and effective networking. Um, and kind of getting people comfortable and confident that the things that they're doing in their business every day are actually going to move the needle toward their income and their goals. Um, you know, sometimes we we run straight headlong into a business. We're really excited about it and we get in the middle of it. It's kind of like getting in the middle of the deep end of the pool. And then you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know? I love that. Yeah. And not only the deep end, but there's alligators and sharks oh, and, and waves and yeah, right. for sure. And people, yeah, people throwing stuff at you because you know haters. There's people that question your sanity when you're a business owner. But it, you know, so being a business owner is hard enough. And I come alongside my clients to untangle the pieces of their business that are not working, get them all lined out, and get them back on track. And so each of them are different. Um, but my focus for um, most of the content that I produce is around sales and networking because that's the, the heart of a business. Um, and a lot of people are uncomfortable with sales. When I say the word sales, most people make a face. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to ask you a question about that. Sure. What's the difference between marketing and sales? So marketing is, in my opinion, sending out messages. It's just sending. It's it's. Um, coming at you. Um, sales, and again, in my opinion, is building that relationship with that person. There's a give and a take, an ebb and a flow. It's not just one-sided, it's two-sided. And that's where the networking piece comes in. Again, networking is all about building relationships. So sales, being effective in sales and, and, and networking go hand in hand. The marketing, in my opinion, is just throwing messages out and marketing to people um, with uh, push strategies rather than using pull strategies and a give and take in a relationship. You know, it's funny how things have evolved. I, I agree with you. You know, the, the way it is today, you, you got to be out there. You got to be messaging is important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to give the right message if you haven't figured out what it is you're selling. I mean, there's so many layers to it. But getting back to, I want to ask you, because I've started networking groups. I've been in networking groups. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I ever really got the concept uh, until recently mm -hmm. where, you know, for some reason, there was a disconnect between the networking and the sales. I thought it was like I just meet enough people and then they're going to refer people to me. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Right. No. <laughs> Is that, the, that was the wrong expectations, right? Well, yes and no. So you're not wrong. It's just there's that middle piece that you're missing. And the middle piece 
is the the meat in the sandwich. So you got a sandwich. I, I, I don't know why I'm throwing out all these analogies today. I heard that. I, I like the sandwich one. You got the sandwich. So you've joined the networking group, right? And you're going in the room, but you're, you've got another piece of bread over here where you're expecting the referrals in the business. And in the middle is the, the goodies that are in the sandwich. And that's where the relationships have to form. Um, you know this from being in business for so long. People want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And referring somebody to, if I were to refer a friend to you and you refer a friend to me, we are both risking our reputations with that referral. So referring, especially now, people really want to make sure that the person that the person I'm sending my best client to is going to treat them the way I want them to be treated. And it's going to make me look good in the process. So my client's going to come back and go, thank you for sending me to Joe. He was amazing. Otherwise, I'm putting my reputation at risk. And I've got to make sure you kind of have to prove to me that you're somebody worth risking my reputation for. And that's where the networking and the relationships come comes in. When, when uh, my clients go to networking events and that's all they do is go to the event. They collect a whole bunch of business cards kiss a whole lot of babies, shake a lot of hands, and then they go home. That's a waste of time. They've got to get to know people. I would almost rather they go in and meet one or two, three people, have an actual conversation, exchange information, and ask how they can be of service to that other person. Because if we are a giver first, then people are going to, it's going to establish that relationship, that know, like, and trust, and they're going to want to do business with us. So is that a BNI term? Because I've heard givers give, right? A yep. Givers get, givers okay. get. Yeah, that's a BNI term, business networking. And, international. Yep. And it's funny because I I keep hearing that term, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I'm looking at my clients. I'm like, it's, it's, he's a a, a taker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's really hard to do business with because they're mm -hmm. always looking for something. Yeah. But I have some longtime clients that, you know, most, I'd say over 80% of my business comes from referrals. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, it is. So that's, that's where everybody wants to get in business um, is just, you know, where you don't have to make any cold calls. You don't have to go to the networking events. You've got this great. Um, well, system. so since COVID, I, I think I've met like hundreds of people that I wouldn't have met. You know, I'm sure that happened to, to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the and the more I'm out there, the more I'm, I'm going to. And they're not necessarily networking meetings. They might be small mastermind groups where right. somebody's putting on a presentation. And, you, you know, you keep seeing the same people, you, you know, and that that's how, you know, I, I feel like I've been establishing relationships so yeah uh, i want to get back to the all those cards thing okay because i just did a you know i'm going on all these meetings and, and i connect with a lot of people mm -hmm. and it, so i started downloading the chat because you know everybody puts their info in right so i had my va i said oh i thought i was brilliant because i said <laughs> Put all of these contacts in a spreadsheet, and one by one, I'll I'll get back to them. Mm -hmm. I think I got back to three of them so far. <laughs> so the whole card thing, that you know. So yeah. what's the, I, uh, what's the strategy then? If you're in one of these groups, you know, there might be twenty or twenty-five people, even fifteen. Mm -hmm. So what's my uh, approach so that that doesn't happen? So my um, the tool that I use to keep me in on track and doing the work is I just use a CRM system um, and there's paid versions. There's free versions online. Your Excel spreadsheet is actually a CRM system. You're just not using it. Sorry, Joe. Um, no, no, you're right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a shoebox with index cards or you have the business cards stacked on your desk and you're going through them, it really doesn't matter. What matters is what you do with those cards. So those are people that you have connected with and built, a, you've established 
the basis of a relationship with. And so what I do when I get home from an, a networking event is I go back through and I ask myself, okay, what conversations did I have that were impactful? Who made an impression on me? Who do I want to build a relationship with? Who can I help? And who do I think could possibly help me? And you're correct. Being a giver first, mm -hmm. the way that I've been successful. There's a really great book called The Go-Giver based on being a giver first. And yeah. I, um, isn't it Brian Tracy or somebody who said, if you help enough other, no, Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar. That's one of yeah. my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you that's why I said it. So, you know, I was a nasty, miserable accountant. And then I started reading books like The Science of Getting Rich and Napoleon Hill. Yes. And it's like, oh, my God, the, you know, it finally sunk in. <laughs> Just took a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, and it <laughs> works. It works um, without a doubt. Of, you did a lot of things right in meeting the people and making those connections, but getting them back home and not doing the, anything with them. You know, that, so, that's the C, so the CRM system, so I have a, a program called Kartra, and okay. we started setting up systems. Mm -hmm. So you might have gotten, like, we have this podcast system. Mm -hmm. So you probably got a couple of emails. So I should have the same sort of thing then, right? Or should it be personalized? So I'm not familiar with Kartra. Um, is it? Well, a it's just like an email program. You know, oh, you gotcha. could time the, you just put the name in mm -hmm. and it, it'll say, you know, even up to like 15 minutes before you, you could get a text. Got it. Okay. It's, it's automated. So I, um, I don't think that's an effective way to network because it's a cold text. It's a cold email. Um, my success in business has come from making warm connections, even if it's on Zoom. Let me get to know you. You know, are you married, not married, kids, no kids? Are you from here? You know, you know, what's your story? Everybody's got a story. And then you establish those connections um, and you find the common ground. And then I figure out how I can help them or how they're going to fit into my network because people, each person I meet is going to fit in at a different spot. Some people are going to be wonderful potential clients for me for coaching. Other people are going to be potential great referral sources for me and also myself for them. And then other people are going to be just really great supporters and connectors. Um, and so you really kind of have to decide what bucket they go into. And then that will let you know what the next follow up is. But if I have met somebody that I feel like I've got a really great connection with, I'm going to reach out and somehow get them an audio message. That is the most impactful thing. A, wow. lot people, a lot of people don't answer the phone anymore, which is completely understandable because they probably don't have my phone number in their phone yet. And they're not, they don't recognize it and they think it's spam, but I could leave them a voicemail and I could say, you know, Hey, it's Tracy. I met you at the, you know, chamber networking event. Loved our conversation. I'd love to hear more about your business and how I can help you. Um, maybe we could connect over Zoom or coffee, whatever your schedule allows. So I'm sorry to stop. It just I have this program uh, called Loom. Yes. Where you I do like it. short little videos. I mean, it, I it. it's free if you do them for like under five minutes. Yep. I, so I, I think that that's a and it's so easy. They, you do it for like two, one or two minutes. Yep. What I love about Loom is it is the next best thing to being right in front of them because they can see your face, they can see your smile, they can hear your voice. There's so much that is lost in translation of the written word on a text message or an email because human beings, we communicate more in what we don't say than what we do say. I can't tell you how much trouble I've gotten into using text messages and, and emails. Because yeah. I, I have a dry sense of humor, and apparently it doesn't come out well. <laughs> it doesn't translate and, very well. <laughs> especially for people that just got to just met me. Yes. Yeah, okay. for sure. So, so what I love about things like Loom is, um, they, like I say, they can see your face. It's a short video. It's fun. It's like you make the video. And I did this recently. I did a five-day workshop in my Facebook group. Um, talking about the five biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make to la and launching my six-week online course. 
And after that, I had a lot of people that said the feedback was great. Um, and I sent, I recorded a short loom video mm -hmm. and I sent it through Facebook messenger to everybody that had been on live at some point or caught the replay, did the homework or whatever, and just said, Hey, I am so excited that you were with me in the workshop. Thank you so much for giving me your time. It's such a gift and it means so much to me. And I would love to know what your favorite thing was or your biggest takeaway. And people were so excited. They, they, one guy emailed me or texted me back and said, how the heck did you make that video? <laughs> I was like, yeah. you the Luma. Did, did you, I just, I want to lower my uh, phone. <laughs> I've done this so many times and people call. It's usually my mother or my, my sister. <laughs> somebody. Right. I yeah, I'm like, Ma, I'm, I'm in the middle of an interview. Right. I turned mine on do not disturbs just so that nobody can get to me right now. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So tell me about affiliates mm -hmm. because, you know, so I meet a lot of people and, then, and we have an affiliate program mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes it works. You know, I'm going to, I'm asking you, should, mm -hmm. is an affiliate program appropriate for an accountant? Gosh, that's a great question. So tell me a little bit more about it. Does it work? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. No, it, no, it hasn't worked. And, and that's no, I mean, the problem. Okay. Well, tell me the details of it. Well, the you know, we do bookkeeping, tax returns, you know, whatever. And we offer affiliates up to 20%. Uh, got it. So basically, okay. you, they, I send you a referral. And if that person becomes your client, you send me 20%. Right. Got it. So we've set that up with a couple of affiliates and we got nothing. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I'm building something. Like, but we put time and effort into mm -hmm. talking to them. And I'm like, uh, the best referrals come from people that they they actually call me and say, is it okay if I send my friend to you? Right. And I was like, well, let me think about that. You know. <laughs> And then, you know, I pause and there's silence and I right. said, okay, I could fit them in. Right. Yeah. But it's, it's almost like I would rather get somebody like that than somebody that came to me because the, the other person is going to get money. Right. Correct. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, I haven't dabbled in affiliate programs. Okay. A couple of things come to mind though. Um, people want to know what's in it for them. And if it's not converting, then there's a, there's a disconnect there somewhere and you'd have to test it to see what the disconnect is. It could be that they don't know how to have the conversation. Not everybody is like me and can talk to a brick wall and be a good affiliate. It's just not going to well, happen. The, the other side of it is I have clients that came on board and they said, listen, if, you know, we have an affiliate program that you should take advantage of it. Yeah. You know, and then I have clients that know about it and they're just happy, you know, sending me people. Well, but I thought that was some somehow connected with networking. It, I don't think it's connected with networking. I okay. mean, to me, networking is expanding your network and your reach and the people that you know, and you could refer to, and they could refer you back. An affiliate program is more transactional. In, just in my opinion, um, because affiliate programs actually came from the retail space first, you know, um, Amazon affiliate program. There's one, oh, okay. you know, um, and it, kind of an affiliate program. If there's certain brands of shoes that I could get a $10 off code and share it with my friends and, you know, get a discount or whatever. Um, so I haven't heard it used a lot for CPAs. The one thing I do find in the money space when it comes to CPAs, financial advisors, even life insurance and real estate, uh, I'm not sorry, real estate, um, estate and trust attorneys. Those are very hard subjects for people to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about their money. They don't right. want to talk about how disorganized they are. They don't want to talk about how they haven't reconciled their QuickBooks in five years. <laughs> The IRS, oh, you know, my clients. I guess. Yeah. And, you know, nobody wants to talk about how the IRS is knocking on their door uh, or that they um, unless they're knocking on their door. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And, and it's yeah. the same thing with um, financial advising. That is a hard referral, even in a professional networking organization like BNI, because I've been in BNI over 10 years. The financial advisors 
know going in that that's a hard referral. And it's because people don't sit around the, co- the dinner table or the cocktail party talking about their money. So that may be, it may be an uncomfortable conversation um, for someone to have. And that person may not understand exactly how to broach the subject to maximize the affiliate program. So yeah. there could be a couple and, and it could be the amount of money they're getting. They don't, they're not comfortable putting themselves out there for it. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. So let, let's go to the other part of that caught my attention about, you know, and that's, you know, closing the sale because now, now we, I think, now I think we have like the, the two ends of the sandwich, but <laughs> we got to connect them. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so do, you mean, do, you- do you mean closing the sale in terms of asking someone in your networking group for referrals or do you mean closing the sale in terms of I'm closing a, a client on my services? I want to convert that relationship into some kind of cash or barter Mm -hmm. or, you know, otherwise, you know, and that's not true. I have friends that for a long time and we never have done business. They've never referred anybody to me, but I've gotten a lot of out of the relationship, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Uh, But you know, I'm in business. Let, let's let's cut to the chase. I'm, yeah, we're in business, right? If I'm not in this to, to generate cash flow, then I'm wasting. I could go to parties and make friends. Exactly. Okay. You could go to the beach and make friends. That would be way yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. And I do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm networking, and it's not just, you know, I want to meet good people. I want to meet like-minded people that will support me and I could support them. Right. But there's got to be some monetization at, at the end, right? Correct. And the what I have found is the more I help other people, the more they are willing to help me. It does come back to me. It's not always immediate. But first of all, I've got to make sure that that person is comfortable with me. They know me. They know that I will take good care of their client. And they know what I do. Because a confused client or customer will not purchase. A confused referral partner can't refer you. So you have to make sure what you do is a lot more straightforward than what I do as a coach. People don't understand coaching quite yet, I don't think. And in all practicality, the coaching industry right now is like the wild, wild west. I mean, everybody's a coach. They're all, and you you know, you can nail down exactly what they do. But with a CPA, you can say, very concretely, I do taxes, I do bookkeeping, I do. Well, that that's true and it's not true. Because <laughs> it, well, I have a specific niche. Okay. And like, I don't do audits. Uh, I don't do brick and mortar. A lot of like my, I'm remote. And some people want, they want to sit in front of an, an accountant and have them hold their hands. Yeah. Uh, there's people that <laughs> handle like trucking. And I don't handle big corporations anymore. Right. Right. So those things are important so that your referral partner knows, Okay, Joe is virtual. He does a lot of service based businesses. Trucking is no good for him. Audits are no good for him. And so once your referral partner knows who you're looking for, who's your person, we have to communicate very clearly in our in our delivery. Who is our person? Who's our ideal client? We can't just say, oh, I, I market to everybody with money. No. Anyone that drinks water. Right. No. <laughs> anybody, anybody with a brain. No, it's not going to work. Um, so we have to be specific. And so once you're specific with that referral partner, then it becomes a matter of making sure that they know that you're a good person. You're going to take care of their referral and asking for the business. I think uh, my comfort level and the success that I've had is being a giver first, making the connection, putting their needs before mine. How can I help you? And they will reciprocate. Now, if I come ac- across somebody who isn't, I'll just ask them, hey, here, here's a few people I'm trying to get in touch with. Do you happen to know any, like, let's say they're a, a painter. And I could say, do you happen to know any other painters in town? Because they all talk to her, that maybe are just, they seem stressed, they seem overwhelmed, or they're one, you know, they're wanting to grow their team. They've talked to you about it, but they just don't know where to start. That would be a great referral for me. You know, who do you know that you could introduce me to? Sometimes you just have to ask. I, you know what? I tell people, and I try to, 
we do practice it. You know, we send out cards and even in my email, I say, you know, the best compliment is a referral. Right. So, you know, that, that is good. I had a really good question for you, but I was so interested in what you were saying. Now I forgot what it was, <laughs> but, uh, Oh, here, here it is. Isn't that your, it starts with your messaging. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've been working on this uh, for a long time, you know, and it's it's like torture because you got to keep drilling down. You're like, oh, wait a second. Now I go, oh, we don't want that that kind of client. So let's not put that message out there. Right. Uh, yes. The so would you, I, I, is that do you do any of that? You, you must look at what their messaging is. Right. Absolutely. So, so what? So uh, th this is what I wanted to tell you about your messaging. I got, as soon as I saw your picture, I got exactly what you do. Oh, good. Because I didn't see, co I didn't even see coach there. I saw networking and closing mm -hmm. sales or whatever else it said, but that's what I focused on. Cool. Yeah. So we're yeah. trying to focus on people that are new in business and have absolutely no idea what they're doing, and mm -hmm. they're humble enough to admit it. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> say, um, that person doesn't want to talk about their numbers. That person doesn't so, want to talk about profit and loss. And so good messaging might be, does the profit and loss make your brain shut off? If it does, I can help you. You know, just... Yeah. We have to speak to their pain point. What is the pain point of the of your client? The pain point is they're not good. Maybe they are good with numbers, but they've got so many other plates they're spinning to get this business off the ground. That they haven't even had time to think about it. Do they want to do QuickBooks? Do they want to use an Excel spreadsheet? Do they want to just get a piece of paper and a pen and start writing down income and expenses? I mean, so they need somebody to come alongside them and say, you know, I help people just like you nail down you know, your nail down your profit and loss, nail down those balance sheets. So you can see where your expenses are and how much each thing in your business is costing you. And you can see exactly how much money you're making so that we can tweak it and make you more. So at the yeah. end of the day, every person that's in business wants to make money and they want to avoid the things that bring them pain. So for yeah. me talking to people about sales coaching I speak to the fact that people are uncomfortable in sales. They don't want to sound annoying. They don't want to sound spammy or salesy. They don't, they make it, they end up feeling weird and it's like their brain shuts off. And, you know, another area I help people with is their pricing. Um, when somebody says, how much do you charge and your brain shuts off and you don't want to answer the question, that's a problem. And there's a lot of people out there that will skirt the issue and they'd sooner have the client figure it out for themselves than quote their price. And so for those people, I would say to them, you know, does that make your brain shut off? And they go, yeah, and I go, well, I can help you with that. You know, I hesitate to give anybody information. Like when they say, what's your budget? Yes. I'm like, I, I can't, I started to just say zero. I don't want to <laughs> spend, I don't want to spend a penny. If you could figure out how to, I can do that, then I'll hire you. Right. But, so I don't answer that. Or these websites where they're like, oh, book a free appointment and they want my whole life history. I know what they're doing. They're looking for our pain points. Right. right? Well, they want, they want your email address, too, so they can send you, um, you know, marketing emails. And that's fine. If they're going to give me a free report and not ask me for my whole life story, I don't have a problem doing that. Right. Right. You know, so. I I realize that I really hate to see entrepreneurs str struggle mm -hmm. because they don't have the tools, resources, and knowledge to run their own business. Right. You know, and that's why I started Bedrock, and we offer a CFO starter package that starts at forty seven dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we had to, you know, price certainty. We tell them exactly what it's going to cost them for the whole year. And it's mm -hmm. probably 50% less than any other CPA firm because we have, we have a good system, mm -hmm. you know, but you got to follow the system. Yes. And, you know, 
that's that's what our message is that and I'm gonna stick with that <laughs> but that's what I want in everything you know every all of our social media and this way when I do connect with people mm -hmm. right they're gonna check me out right yes they are they're looking for social proof yep. so what what's the what's the strategy because there's way to, or do I have to know where they are? Um, can you be more specific? Can you give yeah, me an example? I, I avoid LinkedIn now because <laughs> I get, no, it's almost all spam. This is it, true. There's a lot my of birthday. It's my birthday. I must've had a hundred people wish me happy birthday. And I, I don't know. I, I no, think no, I know no. two of them, two of them. Right. I understand. Yeah, I know spam on all. There's a lot of spam on, on all social media. Um, there's a lot of on LinkedIn. There's a lot of people that want to recruit me for a job. I, you know, yeah. Oh, not interested in a job. I'm happy. Um, so, you, what was your question though? What, um, what about like the link tree? You know, so, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, uh, my question is. So right now, I have a media sheet. Okay. A, a media page. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could just send them there so that they could check me out, right? Sure. And I'm in, I'm in control uh, of what they say. Because like you, I didn't, I didn't have your address. I didn't, so I just did a Google search. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do a good one because, you know, I didn't spend enough time on it. Got it. Yep, that's okay. If you Google Tracy Beavers, my website will pop up and... Okay. My, my so, interviews and things like that. Yeah, so this is, I, I went way over. I try to keep these like less than 20 minutes, but you okay. were, yeah, I was picking your brain. I don't know if you realize that, but I did. This awesome. is how I get free professional advice. It's absolutely fine. So. It, 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 allows me to show, it allows me to show your listeners what I can do for them. So it's good marketing for me too. Yeah, I understand it works, but it's a win-win, right? Yes. We, we can help each other. So with that, how do people get in, in touch with you? So um, I have a website, tracybeavers.com. And also on Facebook, I'm Tracy L. Beavers. My Facebook group, it's really fun. It's called Be a Confident Entrepreneur, Gain Confidence and Grow Your Income. And that's for entrepreneurs and people in sales. Um, that's where I ran the, the free five-day workshop last week. I do have an online, a six-week online self-paced course that will guide somebody through gaining confidence in several areas, sales, networking, using a CRM system, understanding their messaging when they're marketing, um, understanding how to communicate what they do, nailing down that elevator pitch because that's so, so important. And then things, you know, obviously there's a mindset piece in there as well and working on their schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm laughing because I work with a lot of brand new business owners now mm -hmm. and my head is spinning, but you're right. Yeah. And it, it's, it's overwhelming. It especially is. Especially for, for new people. It is. But There's a lot of things to figure out. There's a lot of moving parts and people need a coach to come alongside them and say, okay, we're focusing on this. We're going to get this done. Then we're going to move to this. Then we're going to move to this. And we're going to keep you systematically moving forward because what happens is as human beings, we go, Oh, squirrel, wait, okay, hold on. No, this business down the street, yeah, shiny object syndrome. Yeah. Or maybe I should do that. That, that business is like mine and they just bought a new sign. Maybe I, I should buy a new sign. I started a publishing business because somebody told me, Oh, you should start a publish. <laughs> <laughs> it, did, it didn't work out too well. Right. But yeah. somebody, you know, in social media, when they, they put a question and they say, what would you, if you were 18 again, what do you wish you would have known? Oh. You know, I put in how important the relationships are. Yes. So, you know, that's the truth. Forget about, for me, I'm like, forget about the social media or start making connections. Yes. And it's so easy. It's so easy to do. Mm -hmm. And then you, you do slowly, you know. Because right. now you have connections, and once you have a Facebook group, mm -hmm. you could tell your connections, "Hey, I have a, you know, I have something for you to come to now." Right, for sure. So, give us uh, some words of wisdom. So, it went with regard to sales. I would say, be a human being. Don't make it weird. 
don't think you got to put on a sales hat and a sales suit and start using sales words. It's not the way it works. Networking is the same way. Be a human being, be you. Um, ask people about them, make that connection, find that common ground, ask how you can help them. They will ask how they can help you. And that's how the network is going to grow. But if we avoid those things and we don't want to talk about them because they're uncomfortable, then our businesses aren't going to grow. Uh, absolutely. One last question, because I know when I first started networking, mm -hmm. it was hard because I'm like, yeah, I was in it. I was an accountant. I didn't want to go out. I mean, if it was a party, it's like, yeah, no problem. I'll go up to anyone and talk. But right now I'm going to places and having breakfast in suits. Right. It was uncomfortable. Yeah. So what's, what's a good way to get a newbie comfortable? And I, I cover that in my course too, because just because you're introverted or a little on the shy side or because you're a CPA, you do not get a free pass on networking. You do not get to use that excuse. So for me, networking has always come natural. I always had talks too much in class written on my report card. I had a future in sales from birth. But I know that not everybody else is that way. Introverted people, what I, what I coach them on is get in the space, get to the, get to the breakfast table, wear your suit if that's what makes you comfortable, but get the other person talking. People, other, everyone's favorite topic is themselves. And oh, that's a great, that's a great piece of advice. Yeah. So just ask them about them. How, you know, oh, what's your name? Hold on. How do you spell that? Okay. And am I pronouncing it correctly? And, you know, um, are you married? Not married? Are you from here? I'm not from here. Were you born here? You know, and just get them talking. Oh my gosh. People, let me show you my grandkids. Let me show you my dog. Let me, I mean, Oh, the dogs are great. Yeah. Anybody that, you know. And if you're talking about business, you can ask them, you know, Joe, what, when did you start your CPA firm? And, and what, why the heck did you want to be an accountant? Like, do you love numbers? Are you one of those people? No. <laughs> I became a CPA because I wanted to own businesses. Got it. And I thought well, that was the easiest way to learn about it. That's awesome. So tell me more about that. What, what businesses did you want to own? And see? There goes the conversation and now we're networking. Yeah. Okay. We, we can network later <laughs> <laughs> because we will network because I'm going to invite you to my mastermind group. I, I like to invite everybody. Let's it's mastermind with, with Joe DeChara. Oh, that's the, okay. It's mastermind with Joe DeChara. Just awesome. Google me, Joe DeChara, CPA.com. Right. Thank you to Tracy Beavers coaching. Thank you, okay, Joe. I appreciate you so much. Okay, that's our story. We're sticking with it over and out. God bless, and we will see you again shortly.